cataract lenses or intraocular lenses key specifications which are extremely important for you to get the best possible vision quality and at the end of the day the best possible quality of life after the surgery. Hi there, my name is Oleksii and you are at iwilladvisor.com channel. I'll try to explain you how to distinguish between important IOL specification and what is absolutely not important and what you can ignore thinking, reading or listening about the IOLs. To understand what is important, what is not in the IOL specifications related to your particular visual quality, it is important to understand what exactly IOL is and how it behaves inside of your, of your eye. And let's start from the eye, the basic anatomy of the eye, which is extremely important for that topic. In very, very simple version, our eye is a combination of two basic lenses, the cornea and the intraocular lens or your natural lens inside. The goal and the aim of these two lenses is to focus the incoming light, light sources to your retina, which is a photosensitive uh, tissue, which transfers the image to your brain and to your perception. The idea that the combination of cornea and the lens has to deliver the sharp image on the retina. That's the basic point. When we come to the eye oil, eye oil itself, I believe you know how it looks like. It's a central optical disc and so-called haptics. By the way, I will use, if I will use some terminology which is not aware to you, feel free to ask me in the comments below and I will explain you either in the comments or I will shoot a new video about the particular terminology. The haptics is important element of support of the lens because after the implantation, lens should be placed exactly in the position where it should be in terms of location between cornea and the retina, which is called effective lens position and actual lens position when it's lens located after the surgery. The lens should be well centered in terms of center of your uh, pupil and they should be centered well along the visual axis of your eye. Then the lens should be well centered and stable in, in terms of tilt and inclination. All these factors are important and the haptics play a vital role in the lens stability and we have a number of forms. However, the most commonly used is so-called C-loop, which is, uh, let's say, typical form of the haptics. And stability of this lens with the haptics is a combination of material of the haptics, design of the haptics, design of the lens, treatment of um, haptics surface and inclination of haptics related to the lens. So I would say it is multifactorial variable and it's not possible either for you as a patient and even for the doctor to define looking at this lens or reading a specification that, well, that lens should be stable. The only exception, if you have a trauma or specific eye and your doctor say due to that, due to medical reasons, he is going to use specific eye oil with specific form of haptics. It makes sense. But in other cases, stability of the lens could be described and could be understandable after the clinical trials in, um, on a large, am large amount of data. So honestly, if you're thinking about the lens and trying to ask yourself what haptics is better for you, don't waste your time. You will never know. And the general rule, the most sophisticated eye oil is, the better and stable it will be. So let's keep the haptics and let's move on to the materials. Material is, a, I would say, the, one of the most important characteristics of the eye oil. However, as with the haptics, we cannot say exactly from the material characteristics about the eye oil performance. The basics of material is that all of the modern eye oils are made of acrylic materials and there are two types of acrylic materials. One is hydrophilic, which contains a water inside of the material, and another type is hydrophobic, which doesn't have water inside. What is common for these materials? The common is that they are both acrylic, as I said, and they are all biocompatible and doesn't have any, let's say, safety issues in general. However, there are significant differences in terms of um, rate of uh, secondary cataracts after the surgery and minor different rare occasions like calcifications with hydrophilic materials which has some rare case reports on the field which um, requires lens explantation and lens exchange or causes of uh, so-called glistening in hydrophobic materials which in many cases doesn't require any surgical intervention however it may decrease the quality of the image so the basic so the basic core difference is incidence of secondary cataract, which are higher, normally higher with the hydrophilic materials and with hydrophobic. And when I am personally will change my 
natural lens to an intraocular lens, I will go with a hydrophobic material. It is a general information about the materials, but if you go deeper, we can have information about the so-called refractive index of material, chromatic aberration, etc., etc. So honestly, there's a lot of different characteristics you may find about the different AO materials. And some manufacturers use the proprietary material, some manufacturers use um, industry, let's say, standard materials, which are delivered to different smaller manufacturers. So some lenses are made of the same materials, some lenses are not. And if you dig deeper into material, refractive index is not so much important. However, AB number is way more important because it uh, relates to quality of image in terms of chromatic aberration. So honestly, it's also a big topic and a long discussion, so I will skip it for now in this video. And what I mentioned to you about the different materials, I believe it's enough for you to understand what direction you're going to move. Next, it's uh, filters. What is important here? We have two types of filters in modern aerials. The first one is UV filter or ultraviolet filter. This filter is intended to filter the ultraviolet uh, light, which is invisible. And um, this light, you know, it's delivered from the sun. It delivers you tanning and skin cancer. So that's why we're trying to filter the uh, ultraviolet uh, light from your eyes after implanting an eye oil. The second type of filters, it's optical filters. Normally it is uh, yellow filters or blue light filters. The it is the same type of filter, but we call it yellow because of its color. And we call it blue light filter be because of the light color it is filters. It was a long discussion years ago about the safety of blue light uh, for a retina. And honestly, there is no safety issue with filtering blue light. The main idea of filtering of blue light is uh, to decrease the light scatter and to again improve image quality. However, when we filter blue light, we are affecting circadian rhythms and affecting the circadian rhythm can deliver some mood changes, difficulties to sleep, etc. So in modern uh, lenses, we tend to filter not the blue light itself, because it's also important for dim light vision. We tend to filter, let's say, violet or something closer to ultraviolet, but keeping the blue light, uh, which is important. And moreover, if you are a color sensitive person, you might thinking about clear eye oil because any physical filter will change the color perception. Well, if you have a cataract, of course you will change your color perception because your cataract lens will be a bit yellowish. And if you know uh, the well-known painter Claude Monet and you look at his uh, arts when he was affected by cataract, you will clearly see the difference. So to summarize, if you're talking about the intracore lenses and we compare lens with only UV filter versus lens with UV plus blue or whatever filter, it doesn't mean that second lens is better because it has two filters. It's a simple, maybe technical solution to improve the vision quality, while the first lens doesn't need it at all. And I'm going to explain it in the next video. So if you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification and uh, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video, because it helps me to promote my channel. Thank you for that. So let's move on. We talked about the materials, we talked about the filters, which are general characteristics of the optics, which are specifications listed in the IOL's uh, specs sheet. Let's move further and what else we should talk about. It is a so-called aberration profile. We do have two types of optics, so-called spherical and aspherical optics. And spherical optics, it's something which is already, I would say, outdated. And modern, uh, and modern high quality IOLs normally use aspheric optics. Honestly, if we dig deeper into asphericity, we have two types of asphericity. We have natural asphericity and negative asphericity. And again, long complicated topic, but generally, if you try to compare spherical versus aspheric lens, I would suggest you to go with aspheric lens unless your surgeon say something different because of your specific of your cornea. Because aspheric lenses, uh, are giving you better image quality, better sharpness, uh, better contrast, while spherical lenses have decreased contrast and less image quality. But it's important to note that asphericity and asphericity is something important for dim light conditions when our pupil is large. With a small pupil, which is the case for sunny days, it is not relevant. Honestly, all the lenses will perform well in the bright light conditions. And let's move on and what is the most and the core what is the most important characteristic of the lens, which is important for you to understand, which is listed somehow in specifications, 
but again it's not easily evident what exactly it will deliver to you and the most important and the most valuable in modern iols is the amount of freedom of glasses every lens may deliver to you the problem of the all modern iols is the same what we have with our natural lens after the age of 40 45 plus and and, so, and on it is the lack of natural accommodation mechanism what does it mean our young healthy eye automatically focuses on different distances from about 25 30 centimeters to 40 50 etc so we call it a near and intermediate distance it's a range of your from your eye to let's say your arm lengths and in this range we have autofocus mechanism inside of the eye which is delivered by a combination of two factors first one we have uh, our natural lens which is soft and can change its its shape and second factor we have special muscles which changes the shape of the lens so and with aging lens became more rigid and the muscles cannot change its shape already we have so-called accommodative intracore lenses a specific special type of lenses which is supposed to be uh, responsive to the movement of the muscles however uh, till now we don't have any accommodative lens which will be working stable and in a range needed to get sharp vision at all the distances and that's why in modern eyewalls we, we use so-called pseudo accommodation in the modern eyewalls we te uh, we're trying to bend the light in the specific way to give uh, a patient different uh, freedom of glasses on these distances this is the core characteristic of the modern eyewall the freedom of glasses which every model will be able to give you at different distances from your eye and this characteristic is not always exactly mentioned and honestly in modern eyewalls in some cases it doesn't mention at all at specification the only case when you can get some kind of idea of the lens behavior its specification of a bit outdated but still widely used uh, trifocal multifocal lenses you can see uh, so-called additation numbers like near additions 1.5 and intermediate additions something like plus 3 or 2.5 diopters what does it mean i have a separate video on my channel explaining what does it mean and how to understand it i have a uh, i will put a link in the description and in this left upper corner of your video so you can watch this video later and understand what i'm talking about but honestly, even if you read the specification, you will not be able to understand what exactly to expect from the lens. Because the most impo important characteristic is the focus curve, which is published. But published the focus curve and real world the focus curve, it's a bit different, uh, let's say, <laughs> characteristics. Because at the end of the day, when the lens is implanted by a live surgeon to a live patient, we are struggling with um, different lens behavior and the most important for a particular lens a particular lens model is to be stable across hundreds of thousands of patients to deliver consistent results and to deliver the patient and the surgeon behavior the visual behavior they really may rely on and really may expect and to get it is the most important and the most challenging characteristic of the lens to get it and to publish and to deliver to a particular patient so nowadays if you're selecting the IOL, First of all, you have to understand your particular visual needs and understand what type among the four core major IOL types available today you're going to select. The difference between four IOLs in these major IOL types is the range of vision without glasses uh, that such an IOL type is able to deliver to you. It's ranged from sim simple monofocal lens, which delivers the shallowest depth of field, the only one range on only while focal distance when you can see clearly and for other distances you will need glasses to see sharply the second type is so-called advanced monofocal but what is important here advanced in terms of range of vision it means advanced monofocal lens is a lens which delivers you a better intermediate lens and better intermediate vision so I would say the most proper way is to call this, uh, this type of lenses is extended range monofocals. And two other type of lenses, it is a special group of lenses which are called presbyopia correcting or presbyopia mitigating solutions, presbyopia correcting lenses, PC IOLs. And the key advantage of these presbyopia corrected lenses is that they are able to deliver you freedom of glasses at near at intermediate distances. So the third group is extended range of vision lens 
or EDOF, extend the depth of focus lens in presbyopia correcting lens group. But nowadays it's correctly to say extended range of vision lens and full range of vision lens. The difference is that extended range of vision lens gives you good vision in intermediate and relatively good at near, but not sufficient to read for a long time. And full range of vision delivers you far intermediate near, so in the best case scenario, uninterrupted vision across the all distances. Because some lenses can deliver you either uninterrupted vision in range of vision or different ranges of good vision and something not good in between. So to summarize, as you can see, the most important for you is material and range of vision. What is absolutely not important for you, it's a constant surgeon factor and optical power of the lens because it's purely technical information for the surgeon. Honestly, it is way more information behind the every word about every specification I was mentioned today. So if you're interested to know more, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below and I will try to explain you to the best of my knowledge.